Welcome to Macros 101, an introduction to editing macros. Who is this video for? Well, this video is for anybody who wants to learn how to make macros. Maybe you're new to Case Catalyst and you've heard about macros, but you don't have a clue where to start. Maybe you've been using Case Catalyst for a while. You've got the basics down, but now you want to expand your knowledge and start using macros. What is a macro? From Case's help file, a macro is a recorded series of keystrokes, mouse clicks, and associated keyboard commands. Now, I don't use the mouse when recording my macros because the mouse doesn't work in dialog boxes, so it could cause confusion when you're trying to save a macro or it just doesn't work when playing it back. So for the purpose of this the so purposes of this video will concentrate on just recording keystrokes, which is the most common way to make macros. Now, why should I use a macro? Macros are great for repetitive tasks. There might be some editing tasks that you do that only takes four keystrokes, but you do it over and over again. Why not reduce the task to one stroke? You'll be saving yourself hundreds of keystrokes in no time. How do I play a macro? You can assign your macros to your keyboard or macro toolbar for quick playback. When you start the macro, it performs your task quickly and perfectly each time. You can also play your macros from the list of macros in your macros folder, but you probably won't want to do this because defeats the purpose of saving time. Also, with accelerators, you can assign keystrokes on your steno machine to start macros, but that's beyond this video. So where are your macros stored? All your macros are stored in your macros directory, which is in your systems folder. You could see them by pressing Alt F OM. So with that being said, let's get started. So in this video, we'll record a couple of macros, we'll name them, and then we'll assign them to a keyboard command and the macro toolbar. Then we'll play them back. So now let me switch to Case Catalyst and get started. So here I have a couple questions answers in a transcript and one task that it might be very common for you is to uh, surround a couple of words with commas. So here we have um, in the answer we want to put commas around town chairman. So what we could do that by editing. I guess you could just put a comma, go over a couple words, put another comma, or let me get rid of those. Or we could hold down the control uh, beginning square bracket, key twice to highlight the two words, and then press a comma. And that puts them both in at the same time. That seems pretty quick. So, well, why don't we automate that? So how do we record a macro? Well, if you go up to Tools, click on that, or you could hit Alt-T, the T is underlined. Either way, we'll bring down Tools. Then you could hit Alt-M or just click on Macro here or hold it down. Then we have some choices, record, playback, macro, play last macro, or toolbar options. We'll talk about toolbar options in a minute. Bef in a little trick here is in on top of record, we have these dots. I've got them highlighted. If I hold down the left mouse button and then drag that out, you'll see this little 
toolbar that pops up. Now we can uh, put that up here if we want. Move that over. And that just uh, is a little shortcut to uh, get here a little faster. So I'm just going to leave that there. If you, So I'm going to go over to... Re, oh, let's go here where we want to start. So we want to record a macro now that will surround two words and put commas. I mean it will highlight two words and put commas around the word. So let's go to record. Press that. Now up on top outside of my uh, recording box here it says record macro and then right underneath it says pause and stop. So I'm sorry that didn't all get in my video. But okay now we're so now we're in the recording mode. So I'm going to hit the control and opening square bracket twice. Then I'm going to hit the comma. And then also what would be nice is if your cursor would just end up on the next word. So I'm just hitting a right arrow. So now I'm going to press stop. Now this box pops up and you'll see here that it's got the folder, your macros folder. This one I've, I'm starting a new users, user so there's no macros in here otherwise they would show up in this box. But under file name now we get to name the macro and let's give it a name that's descriptive so you'll know what it is later. So for naming conventions what I like to do if it's an editing macro I like to just call it edit and then just a couple hyphens. So let's call this one surround two words with commas. That's pretty descriptive. So now I will save that now the macro is made and saved, so let's test it out. I'm going to delete these commas. And as I let's see, how do we do how do we play this? Let's see, the first time, let's just hit playback macro. And now this box that says choose macro pops up. And we've only got one macro in here. That's the one we just made. So if we double click on that, voila. Our two words have been surrounded by commas and we're on to the next word. So let's, uh, here's another in the same uh, sentence. We have Fish Creek with that. We've got the road, the town, and the state. So let's, uh, we want to put commas around Fish Creek. So up here which says play last macro we could press that. Let's do that and you see the commas have gone in and we're on Wisconsin. So let's uh, I'm gonna hit control Z a couple times to take out those commas. So now let's assign that macro to our keyboard. We're just using the default keyboard so if we go up to File, Open, go down to List Table, and we have Keyboard Map. We'll click on that, and we're going to choose the default keyboard. Open that. And now we're into the keyboard. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but these are all key combinations on the left that you can use. If things are signed they show up here and I guess I've already assigned these so I was going to hit control 2 to assign this macro I forget so I'm just let's pretend this is empty here and if I double click on that line this assign key to function pops up 
and uh, you get all these functions that you can assign to this key combination. And macros are way down on the bottom. So I'm going to highlight the one we just made and then hit assign. Now it's asking me if I want to replace what I already have and I'll just say yes, but if nothing was assigned, it would just assign automatically. So I'll hit assign, yes, and then close that. Up here, I'm going to delete this. There we go. I was going to do that later. Okay, so we have assigned control 2 to this macro we just made. So if I right click on here, I'm just going to save that. I'll leave it open. Now, if I go back to our transcript, so I have got the cursor on town. Now if I press control and the two, it goes in, works perfectly. Can do it again here starting at Fish Creek, control two. So that's a pretty uh, quick way to get the commas around those words. So let's make another little macro here. That's another one with some punctuation. This sentence here, it says permanent restaurants carry with it property taxes and so on. Now this is, he's quoting here. So let's say we want to put in a comma, insert a comma. We want to hit F4, F6 to capitalize that word. And then we want to add the quotation mark. So that takes four strokes or whatever. So let's, I'm going to hit Control Z a couple times to get rid of that. So let's record this macro. So again, we go up to record. And this box is up here. It says record macro. Again, it's a little out of my screen. And our cursor is on permanent. So that let's record now, we'll hit the comma, and I'm going to hit F4, F6 to capitalize the word, and then I'm going to hit shift, put the quotation mark in there. And I think I'll just leave the uh, cursor where it is right now. So let's say we stop this, and then our box comes up where we give it a name. So it's an editing macro. We'll call it edit. And this one we'll put comma cap quote. And we'll save that. So now let's test this one. We'll erase that. We'll go up to playback macro. And here it is, edit, comma, cap, quote. So we can double click this or we can single click it and then hit open. And you see we've uh, got our comma, quotation marks, and capital letter. So we'll hit control Z to clear that out again. And now we can go into our keyboard again. So let's say here we want to assign this to control shift and the uh, quotation mark. So now this one is properly cleared out. There's nothing on this line. So I'm going to double click and then our box pops up. And we go all the way down to our macros. And here's our macro. We'll assign that, close it. And you can see right here it's assigned to this key combination. We will hit right click on that, hit save, and we can close this out in fact now. So our cursor is in the correct place, so now I'm going to hit the key combination that we assigned, control shift quotation mark, and there it is. 
So that's pretty simple. Let me get, hit Control Z a couple times here and get rid of that. So now let's talk about the toolbar. The macro toolbar is what you see up here with this M1, M2, through M5. And I presume that just means macro 1, macro 2, macro 3, and so on. If you don't see that on your screen, you can go up to View, and Show, and then Macros. So if it's not clicked, just click that, and then that'll show up. And we can, if you hover over M1, let's go back up to uh, our example here, our macro for surrounding two words with commas. If you highlight, put the Mac, I'm sorry, put your mouse over there, it says assign and play macro. So, so this is empty, so it's not going to play anything, but if I click on it, this box where Choose Macro comes up, and I can assign it here <clears throat> to this M1. I'm going to hit Cancel. I'm not going to do it that way. I want to hit Toolbar Options, and then this box pops up. And then we, you can see our corresponding M1 through M5 and then over here macro file name. So if I click on this, this little drop down comes up and if I click on that my list of macros will come up. And so I want to assign that M1 key to surround two words and insert a comma. Now this M1 is, uh, you did, if you could memorize these, that's great, but chances are you won't. So I'm going to click in that box. I'm just going to put um, something that you will be descriptive but short because you might end up using a lot of these. And you don't want them taking up too much room. So I could, I'll just put 2com comma for now and then I'll hit OK and now you'll see up here it says two comma and then if you hold your mouse over it your the name will pop up which gives you of course much better description so I got my cursor on fish here and I just go up here I can just click on that and that macro executes. So let's do that again for the other macro that we made. So I'll go to toolbar options. I'm going to assign this one to the second one. Click on that. So we got comma cap quote. So I'm going to put, I'll just put cap quote. Hit OK. Uh, it's unassigned and I can put click on that and that executes perfectly real quick. Now in your macros that you use all the time the keyboard commands are what I recommend but you might have might make macros that you use on many transcripts maybe not all transcripts and you run out of keyboard shortcuts. Um, and then this macro toolbar is a handy way to assign them for easy playback. And uh, as I said, uh, this you can also play back macros, of course, as we've done up here. But if you get a lot of them, you might um, be taking a little bit of time to find them so it might not be so quick so I don't usually play back macros that way um, I think that's all I have to tell you for this macro so 
I'm sorry for this video. So I hope you found this helpful and you're on your way to making some nice macros for yourselves. Thank you.